Welcome to the Power of Lifting podcast. I'm Eric Cafferty, owner of the Mecca Gym. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a contest prep specialist. The focus of this podcast is to dive into the mindset and the drive of people who have done incredible things with their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. We, uh, we took a little break. We did. Which is unfortunate, but it was necessary. It was definitely necessary. Yeah. Yes. So since that time, man, who was our last guest? Do you remember? I don't even remember. I don't How even terrible remember either. Us. It's been a while. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that banter. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, the end of we, the day. And we do apologize for those of you who love the soothing nature of our voices. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, we had a gym to move. We did. And we've done it. Go. We have done it. We have done it. It's been uh, an insane ride. You, Eric Afferty, if anybody know that. Yeah. Or our last one was a recap, so oh, it, was it a worked recap. out perfectly. Well, yep. we're gonna we're gonna cap in here. Yes, right. So talk to me, Hunter. Well, I think it would be a great opportunity. I think everybody wants to know how this all happened. Oh man. And the 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 ups and downs maybe about opening up the new gym. Because yeah. every, I think, I mean, I'm getting a lot of questions and kind of the story how we made this happen. Well, it all started in a galaxy far, far, far away. Far, away. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, so it kind of goes back to, um, you know, when I first started the Mecca mm-hmm. um, and that whole idea, you know, stemmed from, we've talked about this on episodes long ago, but right. stemmed from, you know, long ago, kind of a, you know, a vision, uh, that I've had for a long time. And the first location was, you know, a great foot in the door. Mm. Um, you know, I went from being at a private studio, you know, training hundreds of people out of this teeny tiny little, you know, right. it's like a 1500 square foot oh, studio space, you know, that I shared with another gentleman. Okay. And, um, you know, we had dumbbells and a cable machine and place to squat. We actually didn't have a cage. We just squatted off the edge of a Smith machine. It was really? uber sketch. <laughs> yeah. Got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. But yeah, I had to bail out of a couple of heavy squats and it was not pretty, but mm. got her done. It did the trick. Right. Um, you know, gave me a home to start my career in and, um, you know, hum- definitely humble beginnings. Uh, right. It was nothing special, you know. Uh, but what was special was, you know, the clientele that I was able to to coach. Um, a lot of those people did very well in competitions or just, you know, were having success in life with mm. their, you know, whatever it is that we were working Getting on. Getting healthy, right? making it happen, right. Exactly. Um you know, and the next step in the, the evolution was, you know, I didn't want to just train for forever, although that's what I really like to do. Right. And, and that's definitely uh, one of my biggest passions. But um, the idea was, you know, I wanted a, a full gym to be able to mm-hmm. train people in with, you know, really you know, awesome equipment, mm-hmm. um, you know, the best equipment money could buy. And I wanted to you know, be able to, to service more people. Cause at that point in about, you know, 2014 was the year after I graduated from, from college. And, uh, I just got so dang busy that, um, you know, I, I just was essentially turning people away. Okay. Um, I'm like, man, I don't want to do that because, you know, obviously I wanted to grow my business, but, uh, you know, I truly believe that I can, can help people right. better than anybody else, right? With mm-hmm. whatever they want to do. So, you know, the next step in that was definitely mentoring other people that wanted to do what I do. Right. Um, and I started that process in that little teeny tiny studio. Uh, and shortly thereafter, <clears throat> it just got too busy. It mm-hmm. was too busy. You know, if you had more than two to three p- people training at a time, it was slammed, you right. know? So, I uh, wanted a bigger place, and we actually uh, inquired about buying a, a local gym here uh, that was for sale. And so was it already kind of set up? It was deal? already set so up. So you, you knew you wanted to create your own facility 
was it during that time that you were in that little thing or even before you started training? You know, I was it organically. A good, that's grew? a good question. I, I knew that I wanted to be, you know, a coach and that was my passion. I knew I wanted to have, you know, a gym where that was just the best, you know, place to train around, mm-hmm. you know, because there's been, you know, there's been axiom in this area, which, you know, for those of you who aren't local is essentially like a 24 hour fitness. Right. Um, they're like the LA fitness of Boise. As a matter of fact, they, they used to be gold's gym before they were axiom. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and you know, when gold's gym changed some things about the franchises, they, um, they decided to not keep with the gold's franchise mm-hmm. and they <clears throat> just rebranded and started their own thing. And hence axiom was born. Right. right? Um, and then, you know, we had a Golds in this area, which is actually the building we're in now. Right. And we'll come were, to that. Yeah. And they were planning on having one here and then one in Nampa as well. Mm. Um, and then we had um, Idaho Athletic Club, which was which is now Crunch, okay. which is a massive national chain, mm-hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> and then there were the smaller gyms like um, Idaho Fitness Factory was just – just kind of getting started okay uh, i guess um and you know there's been any time fitness and things like that but there was no real place to go to like train like there's not a good Mm -hmm. gym you know the best thing that we had was quite frankly axiom Mm -hmm. you know at the time um and there's some inherent problems that come with you know those big box gyms like the axioms of the world you know they're very corporate, mm-hmm. um, which there's nothing wrong with being corporate necessarily other than there's things that come along with being corporate that that aren't good. Right. And um, you didn't want. And I didn't want. Right? right. And, you know, that doesn't serve its customers. So, you know, the things like um, cleanliness, you mm-hmm. know, pride in ownership, maintenance of equipment. Personal relationships. Personal, personal relationships, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know down to equipment selection and amenities available you know Mm -hmm. somebody uh, like the axioms of the world you know they just order this big bulk of equipment and they don't really pretty generalized super generalized yeah Yeah, they're gonna get you know your free motions Mm -hmm. or your um, hammer strength is a big one that Mm -hmm. they have you know which you know there's I guess there's nothing wrong with that equipment and there's some pieces that I like but Mm -hmm. it's just they're very commercial, right? They're sure. very general. It's kind of the run of the mill that you can get anywhere. It's almost like general. a template action exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Um, and you know, those just aren't great to train in always mm-hmm. for, for somebody like me, who's, you know, say a bodybuilder or a power lifter. As a matter of fact, it's horrible for power lifters. Absolutely <laughs> yes. terrible. Right. You know, they don't have good quality racks. They don't have the right bars. Their bars are slick. They don't have good knurling. They're cheap, you know. Sure. Um, you know, they they don't maintain things well. If things get old and used, they don't replace them. If things break, they don't get fixed in a timely fashion. Oh, no, you might. Yeah, you're out of that thing for a long time. Yeah, and, you know, they don't necessarily treat their employees well, you know. They're owned, and I'm not trying to just knock on, you know, Axiom, but companies like that are owned by, you know, either – you know, venture capital groups or, you know, Mm -hmm. private equity firms, things like that, or just, you know, um, a a corporation that, you know, is looking at it as a statistics, data, numbers. Exactly. It's, it's numbers. It's, you know, they're trying to crunch the numbers. They're trying to get the best bang for their buck. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not a great place to work, um, for the employees period. Mm -hmm especially the training staff, you know, right. um, and the training staff that clubs like that attract are not experienced. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, um, less experience preferred, mm-hmm. right. Sure. Um, for them. And that's, you know, blows my mind. Um, <laughs> and you know, the trainers are not paid well. Um, they have a, a huge facility and, and things provided to them to do the job. But right. essentially what trainers turn into in a club like that is, a sales team mm-hmm. you know they're just trained as salesmen they're trained to you know get the you know the random person that comes in off the street 
sell them a membership and yep. sell them training and get right. as much money per customer as you can. Mm. It's very impersonal. Yep. It almost seems <clears> like <throat> from what I've heard from these places, the trainers, it's just like a, um, cookie cutter, cookie yep. cutter equipment, cookie cutter programs. Yep. Cookie cutter results. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, not ideal, you know, and, and the pay is not great for employees and, you know, it, it depends on, you know, of course, the individuals mm -hmm. and, and the management team and stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's there's not a lot of culture involved in it. Right. And it's um, very little pride. Yeah. Not yeah. not a lot of pride. And and it's just, you know, it's it's a business. They're just running it sure. like a business. They're they're getting people, mm -hmm. employees in that they can pay, you know whatever wage they deem appropriate for the position. And, right. you know, it's, that's, that's kind of what it is. And besides that, they're, you know, trying to just maximize as many members as they can possibly get in right. there the numbers. and sell to, right? right. Um, so you were, you were growing, you were bursting at the seams at your personal studio. You're like, I need to get, I, I want to help more because I can. Yep. Yep. And so you're looking at doing, and you can't go to these other gyms because you recognize that's not what needs no, to happen. I, no, I did not want to work for a big, a big gym like that. You know, I considered it and the guy I ended up going into business with kind of talked me out of, of training at a, a facility like that mm -hmm. just because of he had done it and he, you know, expressed to me his, you know, the, the positives and negatives. Maybe the of reality it. of the yeah. situation, right? And, you know, it's great for getting clients because there's a lot of traffic flow, sure. right? But you know, you're not treated great as an employee. You're not, you know, you're not paid well. There's a lot of things required from you. Right. Um, and anyway, it just wasn't something I was interested in. So anyway, so fast. So you're looking at buying a spot. So yeah, so fast forward to, you know, I, I trained at the, the private studio for, you know, a number of years and, and got really busy and thought, you know, I think that the next step in, in the evolution is definitely going to be to have, you know, a great training facility to where I can have more equipment mm -hmm. and we can have members. And I want to give people like me and, and others that are just, you know, interested in doing their best, whatever that meant. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not that we're just for serious people because we're not just for quote unquote people who are like competing. Right. But, mm -hmm. but we're here for the people that value you know, their health and fitness and see the value in, you know, the, that next level of service that mm -hmm. we provide because we're here to actually get results. Right. We care. We provide the best facility possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the first, you know, Mecca 1.0, so to speak, or o, OG <laughs> the Mecca. The OG Mecca, sure. The OG Mecca was, um, a very big step. I ended up going through, um, you know, kind of a breakup with the previous, uh, partner that I was with. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, at, at the time wanted to stay in business with him, uh, you know, years and years ago, but it just became more and more clear to me that I didn't want that. I mm -hmm. didn't necessarily want, you know, a partner and I, I didn't want to, you know, have other people's baggage associated with my business. So sure. Speak, well, that's right? understandable. Yeah. Um, and it just wasn't, it just wasn't a good partnership, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a good partnership when you're the one, you know, that's hungry and doing the work mm -hmm. and wanting to do the things. And you're the one with, you know, that's motivated and somebody else is not right. We, right? We've all been part of that group project, right. I think. Yeah. So, <clears throat> You know, I, that's that's kind of what led me to break out on my own is that I just wanted the success, my success and my failure to be dependent on me. Sure. Yeah. And, and not I did not want to depend on others similar to the, the group project, you know, yes. right. Um, analogy. So I didn't want to be the one putting together all the homework mm -hmm. and putting together the presentation right. and giving the presentation and have somebody else get credit for it. Right. But, um, <clears throat> not to say that, you know, I try not to sound selfish when I say that, but, um, it's truthfully, it's not, it's not about the money. It's about the, the reputation, you know, yeah, uh, okay. which is, you know, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So, I broke out of that and then uh, that's when things really started moving along more quickly because I wasn't waiting on other people and I sure. was, everything was You're driving the train. Upon, exactly. 
Um, so I was able to um, meet up with a, a commercial agent uh, that I knew at the time. I'd played hockey with his sons, um, and he's a great guy, Rob Haggett, and he helped me find OG Mecca. There you uh, go. I had been looking for a spot, and he, nobody, I had worked with some other guys at uh, like Collier's mm-hmm. and some other, you know, big commercial agencies, yeah. and they just, they couldn't produce me any you know right. results in terms of what i was looking mm-hmm. for with location and square footage and you know og mecca was great it was right off the freeway yes um, it was definitely a destination it was not one of those places that had a lot of visibility mm-hmm. but it was easy to get to and yes. so you know and there's still some some housing around that area so mm-hmm. if i could you know get the word out and you know build a good facility then you know, obviously right you're on your way right. we're on our way so we found that um, I, you know, got some equipment ordered mm-hmm. and um, got some funds together, and the rest is kind of history. Just made it happen. And learned, learned as we went. Learned you know? a lot. Had learned people come into your lot. life. People get booted out of your life, and a lot. I mean, yeah. insane. I mean, from what I, I've only a, heard from you. Yeah, there was kind of an initial team that I had, and what's funny is um, every staff member that I had when we started was is now gone. Hmm long gone actually um you know i learned a ton in terms of you know what i need to look for in people Mm -hmm. what i need to look for in in staff specifically sure um and trainers and management Mm -hmm. things like that you know i definitely made um my biggest mistakes were definitely in personnel at Mm -hmm. first you know um and I think that well, yeah, how can had, you like learn that without going through that? Well, and I think part of the problem was just the financial requirement at the time. Uh-huh. You know, that was a huge, you know, growing pain, so to speak. You know, I went from paying, you know, five, six hundred bucks a month in mm-hmm. rent. Sure. Which, you know, as a trainer at the time, I was charging anywhere from fifty to sixty five bucks an hour uh-huh. around that around mm-hmm. that price point, right? Right. So I could train 10 people in a day and pay my rent. Right. Right. It's Mm -hmm. not, that wasn't too tough of a pill to swallow. Uh Right. Right. Going from that to paying, you know, almost 10,000 a month and later on more than that. Yeah. Massively. In, uh, in rent, you know, without getting the specifics, that's obviously a very different, um, (laughs) a very very, eye opening for sure. Yeah. A very different situation, you know, and on top of that, when you have a, uh, a gym gym not just a studio right you have to have employees Mm -hmm. you you have to hire people you have to pay them you have to you know do all these things make sure they're taken care of right and you know initially i just flat out you know couldn't afford to to find the best people you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it was uh a brand new business that i was just you you had to get going growing yeah and you know i was doing well prior to um which is why i was able to you know, save up the mm-hmm. funds in order to, to do something like that. But, right. you know, it's just a whole whole different ball game when you start looking at an actual business. Right. Um, and, you know, it's when you're running a business that's just you, I mean, it it's it's just very different. Mm. You know, it's you're not really. Yeah, you're running a business, but you're you're not. Yeah. <laughs> not to not to knock on anybody who's self-employed and you're your only employee that is just so much easier mm-hmm. and if you're you know doing well at that then it's a very good place to stay right. you know what i mean because mm-hmm. it's very little headache um or at least very right. little issues that come up yeah well when you're dealing with people the most complicated things on the planet that it's yes. going to get complicated and then when you have to do multiple people in order to yep. keep something afloat yep. oh yeah so yeah there's well. just you know initially there's just a lot of things um that just didn't get done well um and you know all of that of course falls back on to me but at the same time um you know it's it's kind of the the quality of person that you put, you know, in each role, mm-hmm. so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, we got things going. I got, you know, a, a manager hired at the time and I got, you know, some, some staff hired, but, you know, it was scary initially because the manager I had just wouldn't show up on time Ugh. and, you know, we'd get people walking in and I'd be training clients right. and I'd be 
having to take a break from training my clients and give a gym tour and oh, try and geez. sell a membership. Yeah, you know? right, right. It was one of the most insanely stressful things I've ever had to deal with. Right. It was like, you know, and plus my, you know, my livelihood was totally at stake, right? Well, was, right, that's when people don't were, think, it's not like you're only trying to keep a business afloat. You're keeping your life afloat. Right, so like <laughs> so. I still had, you know, bills of my own to pay. I still had to make money, you mm -hmm. know? Right. And at the time, uh, you know, my wife was, I mean, she, she was working a job, but I mean, she wasn't making very much money at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and then right when we opened, she actually had our, our first boy, you know? Yeah. So Walker so was family. born, Walker was born the month after we opened that wow. gym. Um, and then she wasn't working. And as a matter of fact, she didn't go back to work right after that, um, uh, because the, the clinic she was working for um, changed, basically changed her role. They kind of got rid of her role while she was gone. So um, awesome move. Yeah. So that was a bit of added stress. So not only was I starting a new business and I had a brand new baby, you know, that mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing with, but sure. <laughs> who does when they have a brand new baby kind of learn on the fly. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, I was also having to provide, uh, you know, the only income mm -hmm. for our family for, you know, the first, I would say the first 10 months we were open. Mm -hmm. um, so I almost was, a year. So, yeah, almost yeah. a year I was the only one providing income. Jeez. Right. Um, you know, so late, later that year, 2016, Casey um, got into – Doing, that's when she the got into estate. doing real estate nice. and, um, you know, a true blessing that she is so great at what she does. And she She's was able it. to, to do well at real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, she helped my family get our house. Yes. So I can attest to that relatively. Doing well. Yeah. And she, she did well relatively quickly, mm. um, which was needed yeah. at the time. Sure. Um, so that was a huge blessing, but, um, yeah, it was just a, a lot of a lot of learning for me, uh, especially in looking for people um, mm -hmm. and having putting the right people in the right places and learning how to you know assess people's abilities and personality types and things like that. And how they grow and progress, exactly, Oof. and and how we need to coordinate things from a business perspective. So mm -hmm. fast forward, got a was able to get a new general manager. Um, who's actually a good friend of mine, Krista. Mm -hmm. uh, and she did uh, some great things for us. Uh, I had another manager that was kind of um, in term there after the first one who, mm -hmm. who did a good job but just wasn't as much of a, a manager type. Oh. Right? And then Krista came in and really helped um, – get some more systems in place source processes uh -huh. and all that jazz yeah yep. that a business needs yep and and helped us really get uh <clears throat> the employee situation much more figured out and then through that time you know we kind of weeded out some of the trainers that were a less than mm -hmm. ideal fit we will call it mm -hmm. um what a nice way <laughs> yeah uh and just some you know some personalities that didn't that didn't drive super well and mm -hmm. um yeah, like I said, yeah. big learning experience. Yeah, I don't think people, and it, even looking at the story of you and the Mecca, appreciate that as much. I mean, you're opening up a gym, but the gym comes down to the people, especially the trainers. Yes. So you take that very seriously and then make that a priority. And people yeah. understand that and see that now, I yeah. think. But that's something even from the outside looking in, people that I've talked to in the mm -hmm. community. It's like, oh, you work for Eric Cafferty. Yeah, I know that guy from this or that. Or... It's just like, yeah, I understand that he he he, he builds the A teams over there, but that's on we purpose. Try. It's we not try. like you just randomly right. picked a bunch of people from the street. Yeah, it's we been try. gone through the process. You know, at first it was kind of a, a lack of time and experience thing. Um, you know, just people that you know I thought were educated and qualified, and it doesn't always come down to you know the the education level and or perceived intelligence of sure. individuals, right? Um. Yeah, so it, it definitely changed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, we brought Marlon on in, gosh, probably 2017. Okay. Something like that. Maybe a year and a half, two years in. Yeah. Um, and so he's been our, our longest standing uh, trainer now, head strength and conditioning coach. And mm -hmm. um, 
you know, he he definitely has um, a lot of you know what what I started looking for mm. um, after that because there there's just certain characteristics, right? Yeah. To to be able to to build that team. Um, so we're very fortunate to have Marlon come on board and, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, why, why people are, are coaches in the first place, mm-hmm. you know, how good they are at mentoring and teaching others and right. things like that. Right. So those are just, you know, without getting too much into detail, some of the, the very, very important traits to mm-hmm. look for, um, when you're looking to staff trainers and really getting those people that just mesh well yeah you know um and honesty is a big thing you know sure honesty will weed a lot of people out you know in the end this is a business and we have to have people that are you know honest and transparent with us and not Mm -hmm. you know doing doing snaky things right um so yeah we we grew um you know we gained a lot of members we gained a lot of following we gained um you know, a lot of clients, Mm -hmm. um, over the years and fast forward to, you know, 2020, we were kind of hit by COVID blindside, like, like most people who expected that to happen. Right. Unreal. Um, and that was kind of an interesting experience for people. And that changed, I think that changed people a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it definitely got a lot more popular to people to, (laughs) to not only do things on their own, but to, you know, take more risks because life's too short type yeah, of the sure. situation. Absolutely. Um, but it really lets you see people's true intentions as well. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of went through this huge growing pain in 2020 mm-hmm. associated with COVID. Because right. at that point in time, we were definitely ready to grow. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't quite sure what that was going to look like yet uh, Okay. with COVID happening. Sure. You know, because everything was so uncertain. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had some opportunities just before COVID to, you know, work on some expansion ideas. And okay. with COVID, that kind of all fell apart. Yeah. Um, for obvious reasons. Sure. Just the uncertainty of Were everything. you like at that point? gung-ho ready to go ready to grow and then when that happened was it pretty devastating to you or were you not super invested in the actual act yet um i was definitely into you know expanding the business Mm -hmm. um and the whole goal with that is just being able to impact more people right because you know obviously i've seen the positive impact that myself and some of my coaches have had on other people and Mm -hmm. i want to expose everybody in the world right. to what we have to offer well like you said that that culture that isn't at these other places you were right. able to develop that here and then the following yes. when you say following it's very passionate and prideful members yes. i'm a member of the mecca gym like they're proud right. to say that so right and and you know we appreciate that greatly because sure. we work very hard to make sure that you know everybody is once again not by accident getting what they want and getting the value from us that they deserve right right? Mm -hmm. so yeah it was i wouldn't say the the whole covid fiasco was completely devastating i wouldn't say that um it was interesting for sure (laughs) i i kept working obviously i kept seeing people over the phone it's funny kalia she's the sweetest um she wanted to she got a little gym set up in her house so mm-hmm. that she could do some stuff and sure. i actually virtually trained her via facetime watched her lift wow Look over the phone um and that's something that she wanted to do mm-hmm. um and uh, you know i saw a, a few people that i went and did house calls with i continued to they were okay with me going over to their Mm -hmm. house during COVID and and doing all that. So I was still able to work. I still did my best to keep in touch with all of my clients and make sure that they were anything they need that I could do for them. I was doing writing them programs that they could do. You were home. You were giving out equipment to a degree as well to help people maintain. Yep. And so we didn't charge anybody. Nope. um, But we loaned our equipment out to people. So Mm -hmm. all of our, powerlifting racks many of our bars and plates and Mm -hmm. things like that we just gave to people right 
because you know just sitting in the gym they weren't being used and so right. you know well, I that's was a testament to, to me that it's about helping people yeah so we were you. just trying to help um and you know we were definitely unsure uh, about financially what was going to happen at that time right but you know that that mattered but it was more important to me that we continued trying to do everything that we could do to keep our people strong and healthy and and to give them you know almost more so the mental health than the physical health right yeah absolutely because especially during that time you know you just get stuck at home not mm -hmm. knowing this you know what your future holds right you need some way to to release that tension relieve that stress right, right? yeah because it yeah it was very very because in, in the world in general mental health is very it could be very bad you add that on top of it yeah was quite the yeah quite the thing yeah so people not just us were going through a lot and you know i definitely wanted to help but you know thankfully where we live it was relatively short-lived the shutdown yeah so we were able to get rolling the beginning of may again we were basically just closed down for one month um and we you know we gave people the uh you know, the option to say, you know, hey, we sent out a survey. We said, hey, if you want a refund for this month, we're closed. We'll give you a refund. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to continue to pay us, but put it towards something right. else, um, we will do that. And so we ended up, uh, most people actually said that they just wanted more equipment. Yeah. So we sent out, out of that survey, um, we said, do you want a refund? Do you want to put this towards cleaning and keeping a, you know, a COVID free facility, sure. quote mm -hmm. unquote, right? right? Or do you want us to buy more equipment? And most people said, hey, buy more equipment. Nice. So we were able to, you know, keep some money coming in at mm -hmm. least so that we were able to pay our bills. And then we ordered, we actually sent out another survey. Okay, what do you want us to order, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we were able to get some different machines, some of the pre-core cable machines that we have now, and I ordered uh, two and a half pound increment dumbbells mm -hmm. was another request that yes. we got from Oh, that's people. cool. Around so, that time, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That was so cool. We, uh, so we got those um, and then we're able to open back up. But, you know, at that point in time, 2020, mm -hmm. you know, as we started rolling again, things were definitely still a little bit more uncertain. Mm -hmm. You know, the business as a whole, we were able to recover mostly, you know, our, our margins and things like that didn't look as good in mm -hmm. 2020. Sure. Um, but as a whole, you know, we, we didn't lose money on the year. We, right. I mean, we definitely lost money for a while, a yes. while, but <laughs> right. you know, the year as a whole, we were still able to, you know, keep the business afloat, so to speak. Right. Um, so it didn't completely devastate the business financially, mm -hmm. luckily. Um, and that's definitely because of our clients and our members yeah. supporting us, you know, that was huge. Uh, and I'm so grateful to everybody for, for doing that. You know, right. our clients wanted to come in, they wanted to keep seeing us. They wanted to keep paying us to do what we do because, yep. you know, and had it not been for that, we very well could have been in a, in a big pickle. You right. Know? Of course. Um, the, it was definitely a risk. Um, so yeah, I mean, we went through some big changes in that time. And then, um, in the beginning of 2021, we kind of, um, had gone through uh, a big staff overhaul, both in training and in management, mm -hmm. um, which you were a part of. And essentially, that was when I said, you know, I want to quit messing around with this. Yeah. Um, our building that we were in over off Progress Avenue had changed hands and ownership. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a problem per se, but I had the opportunity to buy that building mm -hmm. before it sold. And it was kind of at that point where I was like, you know what? I don't want to stay here. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, the locker rooms were not nice. It was, you know, um, the, the shower situation was atrocious. Mm -hmm. Um, the carpet in the facility was, it's a constant was, battle. <laughs> oh man, a constant battle. And yeah. something that, you know, w was a daily thorn in my side. It just looked and was terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but what we did have, what we were able to build was the culture and the people in, in 2021, especially 
the transition between 2020 and 2021, there was just a wave of shift in, you know, passion and and culture in the gym that was very palpable. Um, And especially with staff, Mm -hmm. you know, we made a couple of of big staff moves. Mm -hmm. um, And it was a, a game changer in terms of, running the business as a whole you know we just said you know what or i said i'm just you know i'm just going to start hiring people and putting them Mm -hmm. you know in the positions that i think they will will grow and flourish in and right um you know the team just started jiving and working together we had people step up yep um and that was a big a big growth phase during that time in terms of like the vision and and what we were putting together in order to get to the next step. And and like I said, I really wanted to, to grow before that because I just wanted a nicer facility. Yeah. It was all part of the whole mission. Yeah. But uh, at that time it was like, you know, we're getting more serious now. No, it was, we talked about this before, but uh, you shared more detailed about this, the history of the Mecca and stuff. And we were on a road trip down to Kalia's show down Mm -hmm. there in Salt Lake. But I mentioned to you how, there was so much uncertainty in the world and there were so many people who backed away mm-hmm. from progress, backed away and just said, let's hold off for a second. Mm-hmm. Where in turn you hired more, mm-hmm. you put more money back into the business. You did this and you did this. And I think that's a huge testament to you as a business owner, but also to you and the fact of it proves what your mission actually is. It's not about growing a business and making margins bigger because no. that doesn't drive you like no. that does. That's about making it possible for as many people to become as healthy and confident as possible, just you like know, from the beginning. I think a lot of it was just seeing the impact we're able to have on people mm-hmm. and wanting to expand that, Right. you know, because it's really, it's not about the money for us. It never has been. I mean, that's going to be there. If well, you part provide, of running a business, right? Right. If you provide value for for people, and mm-hmm. so you know, I just really wanted to double down on the value that we were able to provide people, right? You know, um, and we needed a nicer facility. We needed a bigger facility. We needed to have a place that was the true mecca, that you know people didn't walk in and say, "Oh, this is cool." You know, it's a good little hole in the wall spot. Like, no we needed somewhere that people walked in and said, you know, this is it, you know, this is not a, you know, a a small gym that's just very geared towards powerlifting, which was kind of what we started as, but, you know, this is a, a, you know, very, you know, well cared for, well oiled establishment that has a lot to offer, not just a Texas deadlift bar. Right. <laughs> yes. Not just has yeah. it for sure. So, but and, not just. And, and also seeing, you know, the importance of health through COVID. Yeah. You know, and seeing that, you know, if you look at, you know, the mortality rate and people that resistance train, you know, three times a week mm-hmm. at minimum, it was, you know, just wildly different than the rest of the population, right? Yes. And I'm, you know, a firm believer in what we do here is enhancing people's health. It's enhancing people's longevity. Yeah. And you can see that in the data. And it's the proven. That's uh, it's, it's factual. Yeah, and so, at this point. you know, that's something that I saw as, you know, a need for, especially this area, is to have a facility that we can impact people and keep them healthy. Um, and in order to do that, we, we just had to, we had to grow, you know, we needed to be more visible. We needed to grow our team. We needed to hire more trainers. Um, and we needed to, to gain more reach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the things that I'm big on just in, in life in general, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about like, Oh, I would do this if I won the lottery ah. or, you know, I would do this if I won the lottery. Right. Right. Like, right. there's like, Oh, well, yeah, if I had all the money in the world, of course I would do yeah, that. Well, it's easy. You know, one of the coolest exercises to do is to, you know, write down on a piece of paper all of the things that, that you want to do mm-hmm. um, and, and accomplish. And a lot of those things are things that you would change about your life if you did win the lottery. 
right? So make a list of five to 10 things that you would change about your life if you won the lottery, right? Well, a lot of those things, if you, you know, perform that exercise, you can actually do without winning the lottery, right? Uh-huh. Like a lot of them aren't super financially dependent, right? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe a lot of them take more risk. No. Hey. Rip. No. Come here. No. No. (laughs) Anyway, you know, maybe those things take more risk, you know, if you don't have all the money in the world. Right. But, you know, you can do a lot of those things without Without having, you know, a ton of money money in the world. world. Rip join in the podcast. So, <laughs> what, is it, are you trying to? Oh, really? Do you want to talk? His message to share. Oh, really? What is it? <laughs> oh, bad guys. Okay. <laughs> no, we're gonna be quiet. Good deal. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we, we had to take some, some big leaps. That's what that comes down to, you know? Um, so to grow and expand, you know, what, what did that require, you know? And for us, I mean, yeah, it required financial stability and money, but you know, it required work, you know, which, you know, is is not something that that one should be afraid of right yes you know right um so anyway without going into too much detail on that you know i was able to you know find this location with the help of uh blake good buddy of mine uh commercial agent shout out to uh, kzb uh real estate um blake was able to get in contact with uh with the right people and, Mm. and help me make some moves here. And it took, you know, a good 10 months. It's quite the battle for you. Yeah. To, to get the details ironed out. Um, and you know, you just have to set yourself up for success in a situation like this. You can't just blindly go into it. You got to think about the long term. Yeah. And there's a lot of, you know, financial things that need to be gone over and, you know, things like that but this building had been vacant since fall of 2019 and, and just I, like you said it was a golds at that it point. was a golds at that point and they just went out of business because they were losing money mm-hmm. um but they um oh really <laughs> <laughs> but they uh you know they just there's some things that they just weren't weren't doing right mm-hmm. you know um so <clears throat> i actually looked at this facility in that fall of of 19 after oh really had, yeah after okay. they had just recently been out of gone out of business and uh-huh. at the time i was just like oh man you know it's a huge facility it's right. just you know i think what it boiled down to really was i just wasn't super confident in the team i had and at the mm. end of 2019 um so <clears throat> fast forward to you know plus there were some other there were some other ventures i was kind of i was working on at the time in Uh order to grow and expand so fast forward after after covid uh those other opportunities had kind of fizzled due to covid Mm -hmm. um and this was still a, a great opportunity so i kind of took the next steps and you know seeing what it was going to take to you know make make this journey happen right. essentially um yeah start of start of 2021 is kind of when i began working on it when we took that road trip mm-hmm. you know i was definitely uh that was when right after that was when i really seriously started pursuing getting some contracts in place for this place oh okay that's when it that's when it all went yeah, yeah. wow so it's been a while since then so what was that process like 
uh, for you? Did, I'm sure there was ups and downs, and there was because there was a whole change in ownership of this whole place. Yes, yeah, so this point. this uh, this complex changed ownership during that time, um, and so it was kind of dealing with two different groups of mm-hmm. people. Wow. And, you know, Blake was really great um, in communication with those people, and then you know, getting out of my lease at our you know, our old spot was also a tricky situation. Oh, sure. Um, so I had to put that together. Um, yeah. But all in all, you know, we were obviously able to, to swing it all. Right. right. Well, did you, this isn't your personality, but did you ever have the thought of like, okay, maybe it isn't the right time because of stuff that kind of you had to do on your own? Um, and you know, stuff with the fan? no, when I, so I'm the type of person that thinks everything through. Yeah way more than it really needs to be thought about. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think about every possible outcome. Yeah. Um, And I think about worst case scenario and things like that. So, you know, when I decide to do something and and make a move and go for something like this, it's going to happen. Right. Well, you thought it all the way through. You thought of all the scenario. There's so, you know, from, from when I decided, you know, probably, April, May ish, 2021, that this was, this was now the goal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's like a, it's like a puzzle that you have to put together because there's so many moving parts. Right. So it's like you're putting together, you know, this, say it's a, you know, a 500 piece puzzle, but the pieces change shapes. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I really like that. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of ins and outs. There's a lot of things that need to be thought about. You know, how are we going to buy equipment? What equipment are we going to buy? Um, you know, what? How are we going to negotiate these leases? Mm-hmm. Um, how are we going to afford all of this? Right. Like, you know what I mean? What's how the gym going to end up looking like? Yes. Yeah. How are we going to How are we going to make the transition? When are we going to make the transition? You know, there's a lot of timing pieces. Yeah. For, you know, both financial and, you know, just moving parts in terms of getting right. in here. What would be um, hard too is a lot would be out of your control as well. Yeah. Some of it was, you know, they just, there was just things that needed to line up and you have to be able to negotiate your way to those things lining up. So, right. you know, fortunately I was able to figure everything out and, and fit the pieces together and, you know, the big thing is I wanted to maintain a good experience for all of our members through the transition, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we could have been closed for a period of time or, you know, something of that nature, mm-hmm. then, you know, it would have been a lot easier, right? Yeah, right. Some some businesses can, can close for a week or a couple right. weeks and, you know, not really be that big of a deal. Right. We have people that come here every day. So right. it's not really it's something part that, of their life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So, you know, and, and we, for that matter, we have trainers that if they're not training people, they're not making money, they're not putting food on the table, you know? Um, so it was a lot to, it was a lot to juggle. Um, but we were able to get the pieces together, all the terms and all that stuff. And between, you know, talking with banks and attorneys and, you know, manage property management groups and ownership Mm -hmm. groups and, you know, real estate agents and blah, blah, blah. I mean, the list goes on. Right. Um, you know, it's, it was, um, a lot to, to swallow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd say coming up on, it's been almost a year that I've been kind of drinking all this stuff through a fire hose (laughs) and putting this together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that needs a, a pat on the back for for anything like mm-hmm. that. I'm I'm fine with putting the work in behind the scenes, but you know, a lot of people, you know, just don't understand quite the lengths of yeah. You know what what I went through, and I don't really care that people you know know or don't know, but it's yeah, reality. it was it was it was a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of dealing with people basically right Right. uh there was a lot of there was a lot of me yelling at people or kindly sternly talking to them on the phone at lunchtime (laughs) trying to force things along Mm -hmm. you know it's that that's kind of the fun part is getting it all put together for me i think that i really enjoy the process the process of it Mm -hmm. um and i really like you know 
all of the elements associated with it. Yeah. I think in hindsight more so than when it's happening because it's sure it can be an incredibly frustrating right. process. And then and in hindsight, you're looking at it as you have achieved it and it always feels good to achieve something. Yeah. I mean, just the, the fact that we were able to do what we've done has been, you know, great, but it's, it's definitely not just me, you know, people like you and, and other members of our staff and even my wife, you know, there's been a lot of work put in from sure. tons and tons of people to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely orchestrated most of it, but of course there's a lot of people that executed and executed very well to mm -hmm. make something like this happen. Right. Um, you know, there's just, it's a lot of change, you know, at mm -hmm. once and I couldn't have done it without help. There's no way. And that's really one of the biggest things that gave me enough security to do this in the first place is I knew that, you know, if I said jump to all of the people of the staff here, they would say how high right. or what are we doing boss? You know, mm -hmm. I am so fortunate to have a group of people here now that would follow me into battle, so to speak. And that's yeah. really what has happened. And that really kind of came to a head and showed itself this past week when we went to make our move. Yeah, and let's talk about all that. of our staff showed up and, um, you know, I was able to create somewhat of an ops plan to go off of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had people show up and take charge of their responsibilities mm -hmm. and make things move, yeah. literally. Literally. literally move so you 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 said and we put out the announcement we were going to be closed tuesday and wednesday yep and that was it that was it two, two days two days is all we needed two days and like you said we we made it happen and yeah what what a, what a an entire fitness facility and this is a thing where what we have nothing none of it is light none of it is light you it's have all, the 2.5 pounders that's maybe the lightest you get steel and sex appeal <laughs> That's right. And then it's so awkward to carry. So, and yeah. so, yeah, two days to move an entire fitness facility. Yep. So, I mean, there, there was some moving of some things, obviously prior to those two days. Yes. Um, you know, the people that were members obviously noticed that we had pictures missing from the walls yeah. for a while. Things were getting more bare as time yep, went on. Yeah. Exactly. Slowly things just started slipping out of yep. the facility and mm -hmm. over to here. There was a lot that we had to do here and are still doing in order to make the facility what it needs to be to suit our needs. Sure. I mean, shoot, man, even my dad reached out to, to help. And I mean, that guy fixed a couple sinks and yeah, repla shower heads. replaced all the shower heads. I mean, yes. God bless him. Yes, Wild absolutely. Bill. Wild Bill, right. I mean, right. so like, people coming through. Yeah, it really was. I mean, and I spent hours and hours and time after work here mm -hmm. and on you know spent tons of weekends here mm -hmm. um you know there's a lot of things that i normally like to do that i didn't get to do there's sure. a lot of sacrifices made but you know it's worth it it's like oh poor me i didn't get to go ski at all this year mm -hmm. you know yeah which i i skied twice this year i think you all. still made the skiing happen right uh, but <laughs> you know not there, there's just some things that there's sacrifices that i made and sacrifices that others made in order to to make this happen i'm glad to you know yeah. because it's it's what we we really needed it's what this valley really needed you know so yeah, the move was, um, it was rough for sure. Yeah. Um, but I knew we could make it happen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I estimated a lot of things based off of experience, um, mm -hmm. in moving equipment and things like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we were able to make it happen about just like I envisioned it. Nice. Um, so that was really, really positive. Right. Um, yeah, all of our staff, like I said, really stepped up. So we moved a lot of the non-essential stuff and a lot of the office stuff in the weeks leading up to yep. this week. And then on um, Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., we closed. Everybody got their last workout in at yeah, the OG it, Mecca. It was quite the vibe there before 8. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot um, of people getting after it. So a lot of people, you know, came in, did their early morning thing, got the early morning crew their lift on uh, yep. Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. 
And then, uh, yeah, I went in. I did a couple sets of bench because uh, I told everybody, all the, the team, like, oh, yeah, let's go do a team lift before we moved. Uh-huh. And there, I just – I couldn't even do it. I just <laughs> – I did a couple of sets, and I'm like, this is – I'm just going to put my, my party pants on and get this thing moving. Right, which you did. You put the party pants yep. on. So I, I put my – I put my work suit on yep. and, uh, you know, everybody showed up at eight and we got busy. Eight Costco muffin. Very important. Very important. Fueling. Fueling it up and got busy. So, yeah, we moved, um, you know, we had a plan. Uh, so we had different teams doing different things, but right. you know, you, um, did amazing. So thank you. Oh. Um, well, but you know, Matthew, Kale, the whole staff. I mean, I could name everybody. You name, could name literally. everybody, and you did in your post. Literally, so I, I tried to tag everybody, but yeah. yeah um, I mean, Andrew was a rock star. Unbelievable, you know, being, yeah. Being, uh, you know, doing logistical things in the military for many, many years, he's very privy to processes like yeah. this, and so he was able to step up and take some leadership and mm-hmm. move things along and. You know, of course, Marlon using his heavy lifting abilities of awkward objects. That's right. Um, Everyone has their particular right, talents, right? right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, all all of the guys and even the gals, you know, you had Jade, Megan, oh, Kaylee, yeah. and Chelsea all picking up dumbbells, scooting them out. And yep. We were able to do it in about three trailer loads of my horse trailer mm-hmm. and then two big rental box trucks. With, yeah, we had uh, a 26-footer and a 16-footer packed yep. three times. Yep. And yep, and then my horse trailer three times. Yep. And so we did it in all in three trips. Yes. And uh, there's still a couple of odds and ends that we need to finish up. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, we had to get a window removed at the old spot to right. get everything out. Luckily, this location has a double door. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. So we were able to squeeze everything in through that. Yep. Um, but yeah, and was, that was in one day. That was in one day. So we moved everything from there to here on Tuesday. Right. Then and Wednesday. I haven't been back since. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, have you not? No. Yep. Uh, I got to go grab a couple of small things that are still over there. But yeah. yeah. Um, and then on Wednesday, all day we spent setting up. So right. we've got uh, pictures put up on the wall. Mm-hmm. Some of the, you know, quote unquote stock photos. Uh, shout out to Jason Murphy for the oh hill, hill, hill photography. They yep. look amazing. Yes. Um, so that was great. We got some, you know, some flags hung. Thank mm-hmm. you, Andrew. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, we got everything else, um, you know, kind of moved around mm-hmm. and, you know, at the end of the day, it was, uh, me a lot and of tech stuff put together. Oh man. That was the, yeah, <laughs> that's a nightmare. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it was, uh, Matthew, Marlon and I were all running mops and Zach was cleaning up and yep. it was about 10 PM and I'm like, all right, guys, we're, right. we're ready. Let's go home. We're ready. You know? Go home the next day. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Right. Thir- so Thursday. Yeah. Or, yesterday. Uh, right. Yeah. Yesterday morning, Thursday morning, we were officially open, officially open in business. What a buzz. Know? What, what a yeah. buzz. This place was, was buzz. And then I think there was a lot of still is riding this hype train almost yeah, of yeah. well you know one of the coolest things that i i've had a lot of people you know congratulate me on on making this happen and of course that feels good but mm-hmm. i i want to just like record all of that and like replay it to all of the staff mm-hmm. that you know like has ownership and took responsibility in this move you know mm-hmm. i feel like i get a lot of the credit for this um and i it's not that I don't like that, but I, I feel like everybody else needs to be getting that mm-hmm. as well, you know, because it was really a team effort. I think, I think it was, it absolutely was. Cause like you said, it wouldn't have been able to without it, No, but it's almost like, I mean, at least from my opinion, like if you're getting that, I also feel in turn that that's coming. Well, that's good. So I, no, I think it is. And, and you do an amazing job of expressing that to, to us constantly, but it was quite an accomplishment. I think all of us, at least the staff and the people who've helped I took mean, a lot luck, of pride. I with mean, it. luckily it's a lot of a big group of bodybuilders and power. <laughs> What's a bunch of strong people right. likely. Right. I mean, if it wasn't, there's no way. There's no, no way that would have happened no, without was, all these big brutes that we've got in here. It was quite funny though, to see most of the, most of the people, even on Wednesday, I mean, I know I was hobbling. <laughs> oh, dude, we're all smoked. I'm still just smoked. smoked. Still yeah. smoked. Yeah. Anyway, but and amazing. Of course, of course, Doc wants to come in and deadlift the, the day next after. day. 
<laughs> thanks doc thanks doc yeah so you ran that and then you ran another one with with zach the, yeah, yeah I it was to, quite the opening to, day for I you i had to double work out yesterday yeah. because it had uh, it had been a few days and i, I, had, to, I had to catch I needed, up i needed the the stress relief you know what i mean <laughs> right right that's what it was that's exactly. what it comes down to the, exactly. the mental health just like we talked about Anyway, super cool. This place and the the reviews have been amazing so far. Yeah, it's I'm, so I'm clean. pumped about it. I love the design, the color scheme, mm-hmm. how everything fits together, the equipment. We have more equipment coming hopefully next week. Nice. Um, and then we have more equipment slated. Kind of things will start trickling in in April, May, and should get our last bit at the end of June. Awesome. And 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 in that time, benefits are going to continue to grow. I mean, we got the fuel center yeah fuel center's coming in coming, april get some sh- sh- some shakes and yep. some some samples of yep. all the all different supplements jazz. we've got saunas coming hopefully saunas. those will be here i'm hoping may but we'll see okay the supply chain issues are real these days folks very real very real it's really annoying so those are some bigger ones then yet yeah, more more equipment coming in and yep just so it, yeah, it's been fun to see the vibe we're, we're trying to patiently wait for <laughs> for our final Right. final pieces to come in yeah. but we we probably have about 30 to 40 more pieces coming wow of equipment Cheapers. so yep it's and then once way. that all in we're talking grand opening party grand time. opening party time that's yeah. right but i mean it's always it's always a party here but what yeah what you what you've done is exceptional i think it's something that it well actually i actually got word for word i got an email uh from somebody that said what you've done with that old gold's gym location is amazing this is going to change the valley I hope so. And that's that's the mission. I hope but so. But that was definitely something we saw. That, like, that is so. the mission. Yeah. I want people to walk in and just know that this is unlike anything else available anywhere. Right. You know, as far as the equipment available, as far as the atmosphere, as far as the staff, as mm-hmm. far as the cleanliness, um, you know, I just want it to be palpable that this is way different than anything else out there and right. way better so another level that's the goal I'm crushing it i think we're on our way i think we're on our way uh so everybody who's listening hopefully you know this already uh but we currently have our uh no enrollment fee for new members yep. coming up so invite everyone to come and experience this we have um week passes we have three-day passes they're free to come try it out and uh, we know and are confident you guys will love it um but bring all your friends and your family come and lift come lift come get healthy get confident that's right um anything else there eric you want to share about all this no i just want to thank everybody again um you know from the staff to the members to our clients and everybody in the community that's been supportive throughout this process has been awesome you know it's never fun to do any of this alone and Mm -hmm. and i definitely feel like i have a good support system behind me so thank you to everybody perfect well, everyone, obviously, we're back. We're gonna back. we're gonna try to keep we're these back. going at you. We're back casting. That's right. Feels we're back good. Casting. It does. So guests, of course, coming down. Um, always, we're always uh, looking for comments um, about what you think we could do, but also who we could have on the podcast. Yep. What stories you want to hear? Uh, we want you guys to reach out to us. Um, but looking forward to uh, next week. That's right. Mecca 2.0 coming at you. Yeah, that's right. And we're not in a tiny room anymore. No, we. I mean, there's a ton of room. We'll have we'll have to there's, do a little bit of a, a ton of room. A tour for the podcast. When we get this place about. cleaned up, we'll yeah. have to we'll have to do. Because right now it's half storage closet. It's half storage <laughs> closet. It's bad. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. But we love it. Yeah, we love it. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, more uh, more fun to be had on the Power of Lifting podcast. We will be having guests again starting next week to talk about all things lifting and. The power of lifting. That's right. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you. Thank you for joining us on the Power of Lifting podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. For more content like this, follow Eric Cafferty and the Mecca Gym on all social media platforms.